guys. After four years and probably almost four months, I did it. I completed La Mortada! <laughs> Dance of joy. Cha-cha-cha. I can't believe it. I've been reading it for so long and it just after a while started to be like I was never gonna finish it and I'm like free at last <laughs> hello everyone it is Jess here and today it's gonna be all about chatting about La Morte de Author by Sir Thomas Mallory I decided to give this its own video as opposed to including it in a bulk review type of video because I do think that it needs to be sort of a video where I not only tell my thoughts and give a general review of the book but also talk about like some tips if you are somebody that wants to read this more for like just the reading challenge or for fun as opposed to reading it for like a school situation. So if you don't know what La Morte Author is about it is basically the writings of Sir Thomas Mallory. He took the originally written in French Arthurian legends and translated them to English. And also to a certain extent, I believe he updated some of the elements or added some elements to kind of fit in with the current time period he was in. So some of the ideas of chivalry and knights and things like that were, I believe, incorporated in this. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. I am really glad that I completed it. I do think that I learned quite a bit about Arthurian legend and that was my goal with reading this book, but I definitely would say that it is a considerable challenge and I think if you're going to start this book as somebody that is not reading it for a scholarly reason you're just reading it because you might enjoy the Arthurian legend or because you want to read it for fun then you need to acknowledge the challenge that the book is and I feel like I was somewhat prepared for the challenge and I also was somewhat not prepared for the challenge which <laughs> made me take a long time to read it. The baseline thing that you need to know before starting La Morte Author is that it is written in Middle English. Now I don't know for sure but I'm sure people have gone in over time and kind of edited some elements of this writing for modern readers but not a lot or at least from what I was experiencing while reading. The thing about Middle English is first of all the unfamiliar words that are used. Now I will say I definitely got used to those and it did help that there was a glossary in the back of this copy. I highly recommend getting a version of this book that does have a glossary just so that you also can like have a guideline uh, of what the unfamiliar words in it such as bratchet and things like that mean. Uh, some of them you will be able to catch by context clues and get the idea but not every single one of them. The thing that I don't think I ever got used to with Middle English was the fact that it doesn't necessarily use modern grammar. Particularly the fact that there aren't quotation marks around dialogue or they don't make a new paragraph for dialogue. Paragraphs aren't really a thing in general, I would say. And it is kind of hard on the eye to read it. It also is just generally a little more difficult to read. I think there's a reason why modern language has added it in those grammatical things and well, we learned why through reading this. That's why I would recommend doing what I did, which was I did switch between reading it in print and reading it in audiobook or listening to it in audiobook I should say and the reason why I would say to do both is because sometimes your eye will need a rest it's good to still have a hard copy of this so you can kind of know where you are but also because there are certain things in the story that are worth scanning however I don't feel like you can blame the book itself for being written in the time period it was written like it can't help that was written in Middle English. Uh, so you know you just kind of have to take that with a grain of salt and just recognize that that is part of it which is what I 
ended up doing. I will say also that if you read this, you will find that reading Shakespeare and things like that is considerably easier because this is like a totally different beast, but it does make things more familiar to you or make Shakespearean things a lot easier to read because it's easier than this. I kind of like had mixed feelings about the structure of the book itself. Now it is split up basically in multiple smaller books that are usually somewhat focused on one topic and then within those smaller books there are like chapters. First of all it is definitely helpful if you're somebody that's not going to read it straight through and you want to take breaks like I did. Those smaller sections do make it so that you can like read the section that has to do with like one topic and then take a break from the book and still be able to jump back in the book and know what's happening. Also, if you only have like a little bit of time during the day, the sections are so small that you can definitely read a little bit per day if you do want to read it more consistently than I did. And I found that really beneficial. Also, I think that there are many parts that I did enjoy about this book that I would reread in their individuality and it makes it easier to find those sections. I would never reread this book in its entirety again. I definitely had sections that I would read again just like that bit. Now on the other hand I will say that those smaller sections aren't as focused as I would like sometimes. I think there are topics that are thrown in randomly that don't necessarily fit. Like for example you'll be in the middle of a story about like the Holy Grail and then there'll be some other topic that's brought in in another chapter that has nothing to do that with that. And I don't know why that happens, but I do wish it was more focused. But yet again, that could be a byproduct of it being published in the 1400s. Other than confronting the challenges of Middle English, I think there are a lot of things that I enjoyed about this book and a lot of things that I didn't enjoy. It's definitely one of those middle ground type of reads. Now starting with the things that I enjoyed, the reason why I enjoyed the beginning and the ending of the story so much was because it focuses on the things that I tended to enjoy about Lamorte de Author in general. I think that this book is at its best when it focuses on like the wartime battles, the political dramas, and also some of the romantic elements. Now the beginning and the end of the book definitely did that quite a bit. A large percentage, I want to say a good 75%, maybe less, of this book is actually about the Knights of the Round Table or different knights in general. And there's not a heck a ton of King Arthur in this book even though it's called The Death of Arthur. So um, if you do want to know more about King Arthur you want to go straight to the beginning and then skip to the end. That's the stuff that really features him the most. Uh, but the rest of it is going to be probably about the knights in the middle of it. I didn't mind this. Um, I feel like most of the book is about Tristan or Tristram as he was called in the day. So if you want to learn more about Tristan and his soul and like that particular element of Arthurian legend, definitely something that you want to check out in terms of that. Also like, you know, all the general knights ones. You might hit a moment like I did where I had certain knights that I just didn't care about. So be forewarned. But I do think it's it's a fine element as long as the section is propelling and entertaining. I was there no matter what the night was. But I did sort of wish that I saw Arthur more in La Morte Arthur just because his name's on the cover and I feel like most of the time in this book he's just sending people off in quest. Now for things that I like for sure did not enjoy about La Morte Arthur, it was the sheer repetitiveness that is this book. I have to shake it because of the repetitiveness. Um, there are many, many jousts 
in this book hundreds i feel like hundreds of jousts happen and they're often described in a similar way they're described in two ways a two knights meet randomly they fight then they discover that the other person is like their brother or their kinsman and then their sadness because they killed their kinsman or just like general like we fought because we met and now we're going to be friends now like there's that joust and then there's the jousting tournaments that happen that are for the most part described in great detail but usually the same detail they smote each other off their horses or they battled with swords for two hours like it it literally got to the point where I started to believe that Sir Thomas Mallory because I believe he was in prison during the time that he translated and wrote this book I felt like he was just like I'm bored in prison today I'm going to write another joust scene that's how many jousts are in here that was one of the elements of repetitiveness but there are also like a lot of things where we like list things for long periods of time for example kind of you know I want to say two-thirds into the book there's a situation where a bunch of like a hundred knights had to show up for an event and he listed every one of the 100 knights instead of just saying a hundred knights showed up so it's stuff like that I was not there for and like I said there are knights that I just didn't care about and I totally ear scanned if I was listening to it in audiobook or scanned when I got to those parts I'm just going to straight up admit that I did that a really intriguing thing about this book that I like learned or like really got to see was sort of the development of the relationship between men and women in terms of this like period time period like context uh, i will say that if you're somebody that is going to be bothered by women not being treated particularly well or certain behaviors being sort of overlooked maybe not something that you want to pick up because it's definitely not the most feminist book in the world <laughs> um it didn't bug me because I acknowledged that it was written in the 1400s uh, and that it's kind of the movement of time when women are just commodities to be married off or traded. Uh, I will say that a lot of scholars in documentaries that I watched said that this was sort of a writing where women were treated somewhat better. Um, they were a little bit more than commodities and they do have a little more character uh i will say that in terms of the female sort of archetypes in this book you're kind of either an angel or <laughs> an evil person so if that also will bother you maybe not the <laughs> classic book for you i still found it kind of intriguing it was an interesting to see like where that sort of male and female relationship sort of was like at this point and how it's changed another thing that i enjoyed but also found intriguing about reading this is that it really put across to me how arthurian legend does really inform a lot of modern fantasy genre writings particularly medieval type fantasy writing interesting to see how it could have possibly informed things like lord of the rings or game of thrones and how certain like plot points or ideas are definitely kind of influenced by this book knowing kind of the general idea of arthurian legend did sort of enrich my experience with things that are fantasy of that type so that's one of the reasons why i appreciated reading the book in general uh i will warn you that um some of the relationships in this book do get a little game of thrones oriented don't be shocked i guess that's just a part of reading things set back in the day something about character that i did find particularly interesting is that i think it's kind of an important 
read if you do feel up to the challenge just to think of these characters as humans that have a lot of flaws because I think with Arthurian legends it's really easy to be inclined to think that the king and the knights are really noble and things like that or have a certain viewpoint of why you know Guinevere and Lancelot are like having a secret affair which I don't think they should but like I feel like I saw more layers to why that was a thing and you know I think there's a reason to why I really started to appreciate the Tristan and Isolde relationship uh, when you compare it to something like what's going on with Arthur and Lancelot and Guinevere and all that stuff uh through the fact that these are just characters in this writing that are human beings they are extremely flawed there were times when i literally thought i was like everybody in this except galahad is kind of a horrible person but you know what ifs it kind of brought a new understanding to the archetypes and the characters that were presented in like a certain way and changed my viewpoint of those characters which I for some people might kind of destroy their <laughs> enjoyment of this but I do think that it added a layer of intrigue to me. It's kind of hard to read this book. There were a lot of things that I obviously didn't enjoy about it but there were some things that I enjoyed about it and I also didn't think it was quite fair to rate this book from like a modern perspective because a lot of the issues that I did have with this book were sort of things that came from it being a book published in the 1400s. I decided in the end to give this three stars purely because of some of the structural things that I had with the book um, and also just also a reflection of my enjoyment. It was not the favorite book of all time but it definitely did have some things that I liked I wouldn't reread it in its entirety but I would still reread parts of it so that's why I went with a okay three star rating on to some tips that I thought of for reading this for fun if you will it was sort of fun if I could do it all over again I probably wouldn't read it unabridged again. I don't know what that's like, but I'm guessing that an abridged version would cut out a lot of those repetitive plot points, but also possibly cut out some of the lists and things that aren't particularly interesting to most readers. I did, as I said, switch from audiobook to the physical book when reading this. Now I believe there are several abridged versions of Le Morte d'Arthur on Audible and other things of that kind that you can buy or use credits for. I was listening to it unabridged so I had to go a different route and I used the LibriVox app which is a app slash website that basically has volunteers read books from things that are public domain. Now, the thing about doing that is not every volunteer is a professional reader or, you know, is always like the reader that you feel like listening to on La Morte Dother because it's so long. There are several different readers. It's like a group type of go. So I did experience a situation where you'd hit a reader that I just didn't, like which is another reason I think to get it in hard cap copy so that you can read the book when you have a reader that you're not particularly enjoying some of them are really excellent some of them are at least okay if you just want to like listen to the book that day LibriVox was the only copy that I could find that was unabridged probably because it is such a long book and it is the book of the type that it is. I think it goes without saying that you should only sign up for this book if you are really, really interested in Arthurian legend or you are, you know, up for a challenging read. If you're not into those things, there's probably not much in this book for you. I probably wouldn't recommend that you check it out unless that inspires you. If you are 
really interested in this. I think that it's a topic that you will be glad that you read it, even if you, like, on face value, like me, didn't, like, enjoy every single thing about reading it. So those are, like, my general thoughts on the book. I feel like it was a little all over the place. I probably could think of 50 bajillion more things that I could say about this book. But I'm just going to leave it at that. If you have any questions about my thoughts that are like not included in this video about Lamort the author, please put those in the comment. You know, if you know people that want to read this book for fun, maybe share this video with them if you think it would help them enjoy this book more. And that is all I have to say, I guess, about Lamort the author. So, yes. I finished it and party with me in the comments. Thank you for watching my fabulous peeps and I will see you all soon. Bye.